Hey y'all, it's Tanisha. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I know it's been a minute y'all. I've been going through a lot of things. I've been going through life and we'll touch on that in another video. But I'm back with another video and today's video has been somewhat highly requested. Highly requested. Um, a lot of you guys want to know about what I do in the cath lab. You guys want a cath lab update. As most of you know, I am 20... How the hell? Girl... I'm going to be 28 in June, but I'm 27 years old. I'm from Florida, moved to Houston about four years ago, right after college, started my nursing career here in Houston, Texas, four years ago on a med search floor. And then I ended up transitioning to the cath lab three years later, procedural cardiology. So I made a video about when I first got the job. I had made a video maybe a few months after, you know, um, I started working there and now you guys it is a whole year and some change later like time has just been rolling 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 where did it go okay where did the time go but it's been a year and some change later and I'm still in the cath lab I still absolutely love this job y'all I promise I will never 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 go back to bedside nursing okay it will always be procedural for me or it'll be the clinic. Like I'm never going back to bedside ever again. Okay. So if you guys want to see or hear about my update, what I do in the cath lab and things like that, or if you're interested and you want to know more about it, stay tuned. But before we get into the video, please make sure that you like, comment, and most importantly, subscribe, turn on your bell notifications so that you're notified when I post a video. So yeah, y'all. Let's get into it. Okay, so I have a couple questions on my phone um, just to kind of keep myself on track. So the first question that I have is, what is the cath lab? What is it? Like, okay, you work in the cath lab, but what is it? So cath lab, I work in the cardiac catheterization lab. Basically what that is, is it's a procedural area. Patients come in whether they are having chest pain, leg pain, um, you know, their heart isn't beating the way that it should, there's something wrong with the electrical system and it, now it's causing physical symptoms and they need a pacemaker. So basically it's a procedural cardiology area um, where we do angiograms, which means we inject dye into their arteries and see how the blood is flowing, see if there's adequate amount of blood flow to the heart. Um, if it's not, then we will go in and we will place a stent or we will balloon it, depending on a lot of things, how if it's, you know, calcium, if it's plaque, if it's hard, if it's not, depending on a lot of things, um, we'll determine how we go in and fix it. Also, we also do what's called a right heart catheterization and right heart biopsy. This is most of the time for patients who have um, heart failure. We will go in through the right side of the heart and we will measure the pressures in their heart. Um, and we will adjust their medications or we will start them on a treatment plan to help them get that excess fluid off of them. Also, we see a lot of patients who have gone through uh, heart transplants. And so they have to come in and get a heart biopsy. I think it's daily, weekly, monthly yearly we go in we will measure the pressures in their heart and we will take a little piece of take a little chunk of the right ventricle send it off for testing to make sure they're not that they're not in rejection we also do right heart biopsies if there's any other suspected illnesses going on we put in balloon pumps we put in impellas which is basically kind of like a machine that goes in and helps give your heart a break from pumping and you see this a lot in patients who are in cardiogenic shock um, so yeah it just helps their heart to it gives their heart a break and does the work for their heart we also put in pacemakers go off anytime their whether their heart rate drops below a certain level or whatever the case may be they also do ICDs and like if their heart goes into like a crazy funky rhythm it'll shock them and try to get it back into that that normal sinus rhythm. So we put those in. We also do what's called ablations and that has to do with the conduction system in the heart. If a patient is um, continuously in AFib, um, they will go in and they will ablate and what that will do is hopefully um, stop the atrium from fibbing because we all know that 
well, we all probably don't know, but if your atrium is fibbing, you know, that means not enough blood is getting down to the right ventricle or the left, whatever, whichever. And so when that happens, blood sits, you know, and what happens when blood sits? It clots and that can shoot a clot off into your lungs, cause a pulmonary embolism, your head, cause a stroke, your heart, cause a heart attack. So, um, yeah, that's why that's important. So we do those. We also put in, um, we do TAVERS, which is trans aortic valve replacement. Really all that I can think about right now, but the gist of what I do is mainly we put in pacemakers, do the right heart caths, put in balloon pumps, impellas, and also patients that have STEMIs. This is like a real big part of what we do. Um, for those who don't know, STEMI stands for ST elevation myocardial infarction. So that basically means that the person is having a heart attack and some of that heart tissue is starting to die. So that is an emergency. Uh, they come through the ER, they come straight to us, and we start unclogging those arteries. So that is basically the gist of what we do. So the next thing I have is what is the nurse's role? Okay, you know, you're in the cath lab, but what do you actually do as the nurse? So as a nurse, you know, we get the consent signed, we start an IV, we make sure the fluids are going, they come back to the lab, and we get them on the procedural table, we hook them up to the monitors, uh, make sure they have oxygen, we do our assessments, we check their pulses, and um, there are two roles, some have three. Um, some cath labs, from what I've heard, uh, they either circulate, document, or they scrub. When I first started on orientation, I scrubbed for about a month, and y'all, I hated it! I hated it, I was so lost. Like, I didn't even know how to put on a sterile gown. Like, I was putting on backwards. <laughs> I just, I didn't like, I didn't like doing that. But um, I'm glad that I got the experience because now I do feel comfortable scrubbing if I have to. But um, yeah, so in my facility, we document and we circulate. So the role of the documenter, uh, we do live documenting. So whatever the doctor is doing, we're documenting it like right there. So our main focus is documentation. So they'll bring the supplies back. We scan in the supplies. We document. We time out. And that's the role of the documenter. They're the scribe. They are documenting everything that's going on in the room. Okay? So the circulator is the one who uh, gives the medications, is monitoring the patient, is checking on the patient, is going to get supplies as needed, whatever supplies they may need. If there's an emergency, the circulator is pushing the drugs. Help. Of course, the documenter will come in and help as well. But the circulator is the one who is... Uh, making sure that the, the room is running smoothly, that the patient has what they need, that they're getting their medications, and we're monitoring them. So that's really the gist of what you do as a circulator and a documenter, and that's basically what the nurses do. The next question is, what are my hours? So at my facility, we have the option of working 312s, 7 to 7, or 410s, 7 to 5. We are a very busy cath lab, and a lot of times we do not get out on time. So, you know, your 7 to 7 could really be 7 to 8, could be 7 to 9, just depending on the staff availability and, um, you know, what's going on in the procedural in, in the area. Um, people that work 410s, they're more likely. I, I was doing 312s. In the beginning, I was doing 410s, and then I switched over to 312s. But y'all, your girl can't wake up in the morning. Waking up at 5 o'clock in the morning, I don't know, it's just not for me. Like, I am not the type of girl to get up at 5 o'clock in the morning and start. Like, I was coming to work every day just upset. <laughs> because, one, it's too damn early. Like, it is too early to be sitting up here. Like, I'm sleepy. I want to be in my bed. My thoughts are still not together. Like, I'm rolling out of bed. Y'all, I was clocking in late every day to work because getting up at 5 o'clock is just not in me. Like, it will never be in me. I'm not that type of chick. I like to get up around 9 <laughs> and start my day. That's enough time for me. So, luckily, 
I just love where I work because they just work with you. Like they understand, they work with you. So luckily they had an open position for evening. So now I work in the cath lab from 11 to 9 p.m. A lot of the cases do not run until nine. We're usually done till about, we're usually done at about 7.30, 8 o'clock. And from then I'll just go in and like stock the rooms, you know, kind of kill time, stock the rooms, make their lives a little bit easier for when they come in in the morning. So that's what's been my new routine. I've been doing that. I just switched over about two weeks ago and I have been in love, love, love. I love the shift. So that's that. Those are my hours and right now I love them. But at most facilities, it is usually 7P to 7A or 7, girl, 7P, 7A, 7A to 7P or 7A to 5PM. That's typically how it goes. Um, all right, so the next question that I have is how is call, what is call, what is that? So basically call is when you are, you get a little pager <laughs> and you go home and you have that pager. And if there is an emergency, like let's say somebody comes in with a STEMI, like I told you guys before, or let's say if somebody has, is um, in severe cardiogenic shock and they need a balloon pump or somebody is in third degree AV block symptomatic, they need a pacemaker, something that is urgent and it can't wait, they will call us out. So that's what being on call is. And typically you are on call for two weekdays at the month and then one weekend out the month. Um, or if you don't get one weekend out the month, you're on call maybe three to four times, maybe three times three times so like maybe three times a week I mean three times a, a month three times a month so um yeah that's basically how it works you're on call from 7 p.m to 7 a.m if you work in a weekday if it's the weekend you're on call from 7 p.m Friday till 7 a.m Monday and that's just how it is. A lot of times you don't get called in, but some days it can be nonstop. You get home, you get called back out, you get home, you get called back out. That's just what it is, uh, working in these kinds of areas. And I love it, you know, I love it. I still have a great work-life balance. Like now that I've switched from 11 to nine, when I was doing seven to seven, I still had a good work-life balance when I was off of work. But baby, when I had to go to work, I got up at the last minute. I got up at, had to be to work at 6.38 and I got up at 6.15. Girl, baby, clocking in late every day. Every day, you know? So, and I really love this job and I didn't want to lose it. So I said, something got to, something has to change. So I'm going to see if I can, if I'm eligible to do evenings. And thank God that I was because I love where I work. So that's basically what call is. It sometimes it can get kind of depressing because you know you want to go out and do something, but you can't because you're on call. Or maybe you you just you can't leave. You can leave your house, but you can't go far. Like you can't sit up here and go to Galveston if you're on call. You know you can't go out and drink. You can go out, but you can't drink if you're with your friends. You know what I mean? So that's just kind of the sucky part about it. But it is what it is. I mean, it's just one week in a month. So that's that. Uh, the next thing that I have here is, do you have to have ICU experience? So to work in the cath lab, it is preferred to have ICU experience. I don't have ICU experience. A few of my coworkers do not have ICU experience and they are exceeding in what they do and so am I. So it's not mandatory, but you will have to do your own research. You will have to do your own studying to understand the concept of a lot of things because I knew nothing about arterial lines. I knew nothing about balloon pumps. I knew nothing about impellas. So, you know, they do give you classes uh, to better understand how the cath lab works, how the procedure works, what they expect from you and things like that. But you still have to uh, do your own studying and invest in yourself because, you know, you want to be successful at whatever it is that you do. So you do not have to have ICU experience. It is preferred though, and a lot of places will only accept that. Uh, but I mean, then again, it just depends. It, it won't hurt to just try. I mean, it won't hurt to just try. 
what's the worst that can happen you don't get the job okay move on to the next you know what i mean so yeah um that is that you really do not have to have ICU experience but they do prefer it and another thing i will say is they prefer it because a lot of times you know most of the time things go great in a procedural area but in the blink of an eye Sorry, that's my dishwasher. In the blink of an eye, literally things can go south and you need to know what to do. You need to be on your toes. You need to know what's coming. You need to all be thinking about the next step. So I think that's really why they prefer ICU experience because they have those critical, they are used to those critical kind of patients. Uh, but like I said, it's not mandatory. Uh, what do I not like most about this job? So the thing that I don't like the most about this job would honestly have to be waking up super early, which I'm not even doing anymore. So really, I have no complaints. <laughs> but if you would have asked me two, three weeks ago, the worst part about the job is waking up early and then leaving late. You don't really know like what time you're getting off. And I think that's probably... The main thing that I would complain about is that you really don't know what time you're getting off. So that's really it. Everything else is A1. And the last question that I have is what makes it better than bedside? To me, what makes it better than bedside is you don't have to sit on patients for 12 hours. You don't have to deal with, you know, I'm sorry to say this, but family members for 12 hours. You don't have to deal with the patients for 12 hours. You get them. You do what you need to do. They go home or they go back to the floor wherever they came from it's just the in and out like you do not have to do nine o'clock meds do three o'clock meds you don't have to draw labs i mean sometimes you do have to draw labs like i said if it's an emergency situation but more times than not you're not really doing doing just all that hefty work you know what i'm saying all that hefty work and calling just doing all that extra stuff you just don't have to do it and i think that's what i like most about it it's my back doesn't hurt my i don't leave work feeling defeated i don't leave work feeling feeling like oh i gotta come back again like and just deal with the same patient that's give, giving me a hard time all night you know you don't have to deal with that kind of stuff you know you come into work you don't know what you're expecting but you you kind of do and it's just it's just it's not easy, but it's easy. Like you just come to work feeling refreshed and you know ready to start the day. Whereas I felt like for me working bedside, it was just it was just draining me, like draining me. And so yeah. Okay, so I kind of just want to end this off on like um, maybe like a little story time when I had my first STEMI. Okay, y'all, so when I had my first STEMI, I have to hurry up because my camera's about to die. But when I had my first STEMI, y'all, I was in my bed. It had to be like 9 or 10 o'clock. Luckily, I was on call with somebody that was very experienced. She knew what she was doing as well as the text did. So we get the call. And a lot of times they will call out a STEMI, but it won't really be a STEMI, and so they'll cancel it. So I thought that's what this was, because that's what had been happen to me, happening to me ever since I got off a shadow call with my preceptor. So I'm like, you know, this ain't no real STEMI. They're going to cancel it. They're going to cancel it. Girl, they didn't cancel it. It was a real STEMI. So, you know, we have 30 minutes from the time they call, a, they call us on the pager to get to the hospital. So we reach out to the doctor. The doctor says it's a real STEMI. Boom, we got to go. So I'm going to the hospital, it's about 10 o'clock at night and we are there, patient comes up from the ER and they are out of it. They are sweating profusely, they're in and out of consciousness, we in and out of having to do compressions, got the pads on them, starting the drips and I was like, you know what, I'm not going to circulate this because, you know, I, I, ah, I can't circulate it. So. I was documenting and baby I said never again will I never if I can if I can help it I am not documenting I will circulate to the day that I die <laughs> so
so this patient, like I said, kept going in and out of consciousness. We kept having to do compressions, kept having to shock, give meds, give epi, give life, give this, give that. We start in drips, we start in nor epi, we start in everything. Okay. So I'm the documenter, so I gotta document who coming in the room, who leaving out the room, what time they did the intubation, what was the CO2, what time did we call uh, the code blue, what time the doctor come in, what time we gave this med, what time we gave that med, and then they're getting access, putting the catheters, the sheets, the this, the that. It was too much. Like I was getting, I said, you know what? We're gonna have to write this on a piece of paper. So I'm writing, 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 trying to get the crash cart, trying to get this, trying to get that. They telling me to go get this and go get that. Where is it at? I don't know where nothing is at. Where is it at? Like I was just so stressed out. I was so stressed out. Oh, I was so stressed out. And um, but like I said, luckily it was a solid team because the other people were very experienced. Whew, y'all, we were, first of all, we were sitting on this patient for about three hours. They had ended up dying. Um, their whole LAD was just left main. All, it was just gone. Like, there was no blood flow. So, we, we weren't able to, to fix it. And that happens sometimes. But it was just crazy because that was my first real STEMI. And it just went as low as it can go. South as it can get. And I had to document, like I said, so I had to, you know, remember what time we started this, what time we shocked, what time we did compressions, what time we gave meds. It was just a lot, y'all. Like, it was just so traumatic for me. I said, no, no I'm not doing that again. <laughs> but it did give me a lot of experience. Um, you know, that was just, that was wild. You know, that was wild. And so, yeah, that was my first STEMI experience. Um... Yeah. See and I was like, at first, I did not want to orient anybody because I did not feel strong enough. You know, I had kind of, I was a few months off of orientation and I just didn't really feel comfortable orienting anybody. But I decided to go ahead and just do it, you know, take one for the team. And honestly, it was one of the best decisions I could have made because I really kind of enjoyed it like I don't want to do it all the time but I did enjoy like having an orientee caught on fast you know what I mean I was able to share what I knew with her and what we didn't know we was asking somebody else you know what I'm saying and she turned out to be a very strong nurse granted she has ER experience so she knows all of those kinds of things but they had me orienting y'all this was the first time ever in my nursing career that I have oriented somebody and I was kind of nervous about doing it because like I said, I wasn't really confident in the skills, but don't sell yourself short, girl. Don't sell yourself short. You can do, you can do it. So it, I ended up having a really good time. I said, okay. <laughs> but yeah, so that's it, y'all. That's it. Her orientation was for about... I want to say four months she just got off orientation this schedule is March it's about four months so yeah all right you guys thank you so much for watching I hope you guys enjoyed this video I hope I answered majority of your questions if I didn't just shoot me a, a DM on Instagram I will have it down here it is Tanisha Marie underscore and um, I'll be more than happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you guys so much for watching. We bet, baby, we bet, we bet, we bet, 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 bet. Anyways, I'm getting ready to go start my Friday, girl. So, like I said, thanks for watching. I love you guys so much. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, share with a friend. And bye, guys.